All right. So, hey, Jill, I'm so glad that you're here. This is Jill Howe, and she is an emotional health coach. And I wanted to have you on to talk about maybe a different element that'll help people perform better, understand themselves, or tap into different ways that they can perform better, but also feel better on the golf course. And I know you have so much great intel and you come at it from a different angle. And I love sharing that with the people in my group. And I wanted to have you on because I love what you do. And I think it's so cool. And it just really adds to what I talk about Mm -hmm. uh, relative to the game. So Before we get started, I start asking you a bunch of questions. Why don't you just tell people in general what you do? Sure. So yeah, in basic terms, I'm an emotional health coach. In more defined layers, I'm really an embodiment coach. I'm a trauma recovery coach. I'm a somatic healing coach. Um, I can, you can throw a lot of different titles on me because what I use in my healing practices as a coach is integrative. I'd use a lot of integrative emotional healing modalities. So I'm an EFT tapping practitioner. I'm an NLP practitioner. Like I have a lot of different skill sets because I like to intertwine them because for me and my own personal healing journey, I needed a variety. It wasn't a one size fits all approach of healing. I needed to learn how to heal my body and my nervous system in different ways. Okay. So yeah, that's awesome. I know there are a lot, I'm familiar with a lot of those, but the thing is, is that relative to golfers and the way that I coach, I run into a lot of people who just have, let's say anxiety or fear on the golf course that becomes a big one for a lot of people. And I talk about the connection between your thoughts and your emotions and you come at it a little bit differently. And I talk about the other thing is I talk about how we do one, when we do one thing, we do everything, meaning you're going to take your ability to manage your mind. And you're going to take the anxiety that you have off of the golf course on the golf course. What Mm -hmm. happens for a lot of people is that once they go out there and play, it kind of heightens it. It brings it to the surface. It makes it more um, palpable, so to speak, where they might be able to hide it a little bit more off the golf course or not deal with it. This is what people, you know, are um, one of the things that happens with golfers specifically is that I say that golf has a tendency to reveal yourself to you. It reveals more of your anxiety and your fears and your ability to manage all of it. It exposes that. And Mm -hmm. so you and I talking a little bit before this, you talked about how anxiety isn't necessarily something. Let me preface this by saying, I do say that anxiety isn't created by anything on the golf course. It's not necessarily that someone has a bad golf shot or they have their, there's water out there. It's something we deal with is an emotion that we deal with. It's not from a thing. It's, it comes from inside of us, not outside of us. So what do you have to say about where anxiety is coming from for most people? So anxiety mostly comes from the body Mm -hmm. in my perspective and in my training and education and experience you know, the vagus nerve runs from our brain down to our gut and it's a wandering nerve. It's the largest, longest cranial nerve that we have And 80% of all information is coming from that nerve throughout the body up to the brain for the brain to interpret. So only 20% is vice versa. Mm-hmm. So really anxiety is body alarm. The body is detecting threat. It's scared. There's some fear. And most of the time that is deeply rooted in our belief systems and the stories that we have in our, in our mind that have evolved from our childhood experiences, Mm -hmm. all of those experiences when we were out of control and we had no say in our life and in our world, and we were just, you know, surviving. I mean, really we, we created a lot of survival coping mechanisms. And one of them is that the body remembers all of that. And so as we grow and evolve and get older, we, we stack on decades of different experiences that have caused any emotional pain that the body still remembers. Hmm. And so say, for example, like if you were to have a really bad day or you're having emotional stress with a relationship in your life, if you have any of that and you're carrying it onto the golf course, it's going to affect your golf you know, you're golfing. It's the same for business It in anything that you do. If those things are not tended to well, and they're not resolved and they're not reconciled and the body doesn't feel at peace. Mm-hmm. And if there's a conflict between the mind and the body, 
in what, so like, this is why affirmations can sometimes be hard because if your mind is th- wanting to think one thing, but the body still feels and is experiencing another thing. And if it, it's really living by this one storyline that is like trapped really mm-hmm. like inside the body in the nervous system and keeping that feeling of anxious energy in there, yeah. then it's going to, it's going to affect your golf swing. <laughs> it's going to affect your play. Right. I talk about that too. It's like the, it's, or the affirmation just doesn't work. And so it becomes wasted air. You know, I did that a lot with my golf in different areas of my life is that, you know, I used to tell myself, no, I'm a really great golf or a putter. You know, I'm a great putter. I'd repeat it over and over again. And I just never made the connection. It didn't resonate with me. Right. I, I tell people, I'm like, you got to get a pulse. At least you got to feel it when you have a mantra or an affirmation, or you want to have some thoughts because you need that connection between your mind and your body for it to really take root or have any effect or belief to it. Right. If you're fighting it internally, you want to get to Uh, finding some things mentally to think about that at least you have some pulse that you can feel. I think that when you go on the golf course, people, it shows up much faster. Like a lot of times people can have anxiety off the golf course and either think it's normal or they can, I call it buffer. They can buffer around it and ignore it. Right. And they ignore it for a while, but golf exposes it, or they just become so uncomfortable or miserable. Like how do you find that it rears its head because everybody does experience some of this. Um, like you said, but how do you find it rears its head for most people off of the golf course? I mean, off of the golf course, you're right. You said something really important is the fact that most people want to repress, ignore, dismiss, and, and really think that they don't have trauma. They don't have anxiety. They don't have depression, but the crazy thing is like education is a first start, right. Of recognizing that the nervous system, really a human, every human being goes through activation and deactivation in their nervous system all day long. It's like riding waves in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And we all will go through the state of fight or flight, Mm -hmm. which is anxiety or freeze, which is depression all day long. We have little moments, little micro moments all day long of our nervous system doing this. We don't want to admit that that's what's happening, or maybe we just don't know. And some of it's just knowledge, lack of knowledge, but understanding that all day long, we are experiencing some measure of anxiety like we do. And that's just energetic activation. And we put such a stigma on that word and on on the words of anxiety and especially depression. Mm -hmm. But the crazy and funny thing to me is that like, if somebody is even willing to admit that they have anxiety, they also sometimes have depression because that's what the nervous system does. The nervous system in anxiety is like going fight or flight, fight or flight, fight or flight. Do I move? Do I stay? What do I do? How do I go? Like it's, it's feeling scared in some sort of way. And it's panicking, trying to figure out how do I move through this? Right. I do. So on a normal level, we're experiencing it most of the time before we even do anything that's unfamiliar, anything that's new, especially Our nervous system does not feel safe to do new things because it's not familiar. The brain loves familiarity. Yeah. So what happens is we have this neural pathway of fear, or we have this neural pathway of what's familiar and we have to start to create new neural pathways. Right. And, and that is where embodiment and meditation and visualization can really help to create a new neural pathway in the brain so that the brain can help the body also, they can work in conjunction together to help physiologically and energetically move towards a new direction of thinking, a new direction of being and existing. So that's so interesting because when we're on the golf course, and I talk about this all the time, is our brain perceives so many, I don't even know if you play golf. Do you play golf? No. I, I do. I tinker with it. Okay. I'm good. And I don't even you don't have need golf to be good. shoes. I don't have golf shoes, but I have my own clubs. Okay. I, hey, I, that's I, a start. I got them right. in a garage sale. As long as if I say the word putting, you know what I'm talking about, right? I, I do. I get okay, it. Good. You bought them at a garage sale. That's awesome. <laughs> for like 20 bucks. Oh. And they were the right size. And I'm like, I can't pass it up. Yeah. I'll they're probably like, like babe, I say to my husband and we go like maybe once a year and yeah. I'm willing to go out there. Yeah. They're probably like circa 1980 old, like antiquated clubs, but Hey, they work right know. now. Yeah. I don't even know. That's, that's, I go and I go. that's great. Ignorance is bliss on that part. You're like, I have clubs, right? I have clubs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is what happens when we go out on the golf course is that our brain goes into fight or flight all the time, because what it sees 
as a golfer who cares about their results, not a golfer who's out playing recreational golfer once a, once a year, you might be going like, why is this a problem? I can't even believe you're talking about this, but most of the people are listening to this. They care about their golf. They care about the results. It's a big part of their life. And so when they go on the golf course, all they see is danger. There's water and there's out of bounds and there's people watching them and there's mishit shots. And there's a score that at the end of the round, if the score isn't what they want, they're going to beat the heck out of themselves, which also Mm -hmm. can create some danger, right? So we are constantly exposed to a lot of elements that do put us into fight or flight. And we become at the effect of them if we don't know how to manage that. That's where I yes. like I really talk about and I help people coach, yes. coach themselves on. I do run into people who are just constantly, it's very challenging for them to calm their nervous system down um, on purpose. And I think a lot of that work happens off of the golf course first. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. very hard in the moment. Cause when we're playing golf, things are moving quickly and we don't necessarily have the time to get, calm our nervous system down. You know, I do talk about that, getting our parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system into what I call the center of the house, because when yeah. we're there, we can move freely. Our body moves like we, this, this anxiety and the any other negative emotion really shows up in our body. It keeps us from moving it freely, which mm-hmm. then we don't play to our potential. We're in our own way. So we, we want to move our body freely to be able to play our best golf. And we want to think clearly because also when we're in fight or flight, right, we don't think very clearly. We're just not very present. It's hard to focus a lot of times. So what are some things, what are some tools? And I know you mentioned a few of them that people can use off of the golf course so that they can start calming their nervous system down a little bit, or just even, you know, I talk a lot of times about how your first step is awareness. People sometimes don't know this is their normal is just what you said, this like constant thing of up and down or even heightened, right. And they might not even be aware or think that there are options that they can actually live a little bit more calmer life. So what are some things that people could do off of the golf course that then when they go on the golf course, it's easier for them that would be my thing, my thought on it. That'd be easier for them to calm themselves down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's a really good question. And I would say that, um, like I said, I come from at, come at it from a holistic approach. And so I have a whole lot of different strategies I would encourage, um, visualization of helping the brain in advance to see yourself actually being able to do the things you're wanting to do on the golf course literally closing down the eyes because when our eyes are open, our cognitive brain is, whoo, it's, it's alive. But when we close the eyes down, we actually can come back into the body a little bit more. And so oftentimes when I'm doing any meditation or visualization experience, my hand is on my chest connected with the body, letting the body know I'm present and we are connected. Like, because we live so much from up here in our brain, our brains are so dominant. And we're not really taught how to live from the body perspective. We're not really taught how to help that nervous system at a body level to calm down. It's not taught in schools. It's not taught in homes, you know, for most people, this is a newer thing that is opening up, I think in the world, but I do, I connect. I always connect with the body. And what happens is as soon as I put my hand on my chest, even just right now, there is a part of my nervous system that goes, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this. That is like a strategy I use even in the moment. That's a strategy I use on the toilet. Like when I'm like in a place where I'm starting to feel anxious, it's like I go to the bathroom and I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm just going to breathe and I'm going to connect to my body and I'm helping my body to like, know, like I'm okay. I talk to my body a lot. I talk to the different parts of me. So what happens is, and I, um, I want to nudge just and push just a little bit on the whole, like negative emotion thing is that really there are no negative emotions. Mm -hmm. Emotions are messengers. Every emotion we have is actually has a very positive motivation. It has, um, something that's trying to do intentionally to help us. So I've come to the knowledge and the understanding that no emotions are negative. And that's what I start teaching my clients from the beginning of like, no parts of you are bad. No emotions are bad. We have to allow ourselves to feel them, experience them and let them pass through the body by being honored. So what do all humans want? They want to feel seen, heard, understood, accepted. Mm -hmm. 
You know, those are like our basic needs that we all have. And most, many of us didn't get those needs met in childhood because the generations before us did not have the emotional intelligence, did not have the skills, the resources. They were not equipped to help guide us in our nervous systems to that state, back to that state of peace, to calm. So any of their fight or flight energy and freeze energy was constantly being like, emulated and our bodies were coinciding with it, right? Like we were becoming. So anyways, that's all we really know. So when we're, when it comes to like actually embodying something and really being able to help the brain and the body connect, it's coming to the body and saying, Hey, like fear. I talk to the fear. Hey, fear. Like I see you. I see you're here. I'm with you. What, what are you trying to tell me? What, what are you really feeling scared about here? And the key part of it is what can I do to help create safety for you to take one step, one little step forward. That's what the nervous system needs. The Mm. nervous system does not need the approach of jump off the cliff. Just do it. You got this. Yes. Because cognitively we want to be able to do that. Yes, that sounds great. And some people don't maybe have as many emotional barriers or maybe traumatic experiences from the past that are carried in the body. Mm -hmm. Every unhealthy experience that's carried in the body, every damaging experience that's wounded us emotionally is still carried in the body. And so my nervous system is very different than yours because we've lived different lives. My nervous system may need extra coaching. I'm guide. I'm telling people that they are the guide of their own nervous system. They are responsible for guiding their nervous system back to a place of feeling safe enough to take one step forward. Yeah. I love when that. We move, when we move one for one step forward, then the nervous system goes, Oh, I can do it. I did it. I can do it again. And we'll do it again. And it just allows for proof, you know, to, yes. to come to the brain and to show the brain, I can do this. I got this, but we embodied it in a very gentle titrated approach. Yeah, no, I love that. I coach on all of that, you know, trying to find different ways of keeping your, or creating safety for yourself is Mm -hmm. such a big thing. I love putting your hand on your heart. I tell people sometimes just to even put their hands underneath their armpits and just give yourself a squeeze Mm -hmm. your, uh, your body, a squeeze just to slow yourself down or to reduce that anxiety when you're on the golf course, because when we're out there, things move quickly, right? We don't have a whole lot of time. We can't go sit underneath a tree and get in a yoga pose, right? And do (laughs) Yeah. yeah. So like actually, we don't have time to do that. We'll get a slow play penalty. Right. So we got to move pretty quickly. That's why yeah. I think it's, it's so useful. And what you do is helping people like, you know, take the temperature down, have the tools off of the golf course. So when they go on the golf course, it's not as jacked up, so to speak. Right. So that they're yes. out there struggling. The other thing yeah. that you, when you talked about that is, um, it's, I think a lot of people have a stigma about thinking that they're broken in some way, especially in the golf community. Like there's something wrong with them that, yeah. you know, I'm just anxious and it's a problem. And then they try and not be anxious, right? They push it away yeah. or that they have yeah. a, they have a challenging time managing a lot of what they're yeah. feeling on the golf course. And just like you said, we're not taught it, but I always am telling people, you're not broken. You just have a human brain and a human body doing its things. And exactly. what would you say to that? Oh yeah. Heck yeah. That's what I say too. It's like, I'm trying to normalize humaning. Mm -hmm. What is it like to be a human? It means that we have a part of us that's anxious that comes on board this part of us that's scared or about something. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is then we have another part of us that comes on board and this part is shaming us for feeling scared. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or like, for sure. Or, or we feel anxious. Then another part comes on that's angry. And then another part comes on and shames us. And so then we have this turmoil inside of us that's happening. And there's these different parts of us that are in conflict with each other. Yeah. And so a lot of what I do is actually called parts work. It's based in IFS therapy. It's internal family systems. And it's helping these parts of us to become at peace with each other, to really be like, blended in a peaceful state and in harmony so that they're not fighting each other because really all of these parts are protectors or managers. They're trying to help service in some way. And 
that shame voice though, once that shame voice comes on, that's when we feel stuck. Mm. When that shame comes on board, we shut down, we feel defeated. We feel like we suck. We feel broken mm-hmm. because yeah. we can't stop the cycle of the fear yeah. because we don't know how to, we don't have the tools to. And so that's just it. It's like, you're not broken. You just don't have the tools. You haven't learned them yet. And these are skills. Yes. Yes. I, yes. A hundred percent. I love all of that. Shame is such a big part of golf. I mean, it, they're just, it just connected people like the golf language is I suck, you know, or I'm yeah. not good enough. And we compare ourselves to other people. We worry about what other people think. So we're constantly in this mode of shaming ourselves relative to the game of golf. So there are so many layers. I say, when you go out and play golf, you expose yourself or you, or you're, you're putting yourself in, in the realm of experiencing all these emotions that you might be able to avoid otherwise off of the golf course. And when we don't have the skills, then we're at the effect of it. Like then it's like, instead of us feeling like we have some agency over it, right. We feel like we're a little bit out of control. So what are some things that you would suggest to folks, folks, (laughs) that word comes out like (laughs) maybe once every three months, but there it is folks. What would you, um, what would you say would be some effective things for golfers specifically to help them? What is, would be the first step getting in touch with their, where they are in their nervous system. I talk about how I think a lot of people, some, I was this way for sure. Very detached from how I felt. I just shoved all my emotions aside. I wasn't aware of it. If you told me how you feeling, I'd be, everything's fine. Like all the time, fine until it got so big that it's like, it was like knocked me upside the head. So on a daily basis, one of the things that I've gotten really, really good at is getting in touch with my emotions and how they feel. I can feel them on a, you know, change throughout the day. And I just get very curious about it, but it took me some time to do that. It's helped me relative to golf because now I can create emotions on purpose and I can manage ones that I don't care for or don't serve me. So what do you think that's the first step for people is just really getting in touch with what they're feeling. Awareness is the first step. Education is right there with it. So when I'm working with a client one-on-one, that's where we're starting. We're starting with an emotion wheel Mm -hmm. and looking at the emotion wheel and actually being able to put words to what we're feeling and experiencing, because that's pretty normal. Most Mm -hmm. people live fairly disconnected from themselves because they don't know what to do with the emotions when they come. Mm -hmm. And so we, it's easier to numb out, disconnect, throw them under the rug, ignore them, try to move on. Unfortunately, though, especially if we've had any, any level of traumatic stress, any type of, you know, emotional distress that really was um, impactful in our bodies and in our minds, like those things are still remembered. So I, you know, we start there with just the awareness piece, but then we quickly, you know, begin to move into creating that safety for the body and and the emotions, communicating with the emotions, accepting the emotions, allowing them to exist, being, learning how to be present with them. I call it holding space, Mm -hmm. holding space for what is really present without judgment, Yeah, without us judging it, without us criticizing ourselves because what happens is my really my journey is all about helping women because I work a lot with women helping women turn towards themselves because we've lived when we're feeling disconnected and disassociated from ourselves and we're not able to even see it we are turning against ourselves mm-hmm. we are being like ah I can't handle it's too much and we just kind of disconnect as a survival coping strategy but really it's all about turning back to ourselves with compassion. And I love that you said the word with curiosity, mm-hmm. yeah. compassion, curiosity, and recognizing by getting equipped with some tools that we have choice. We have choices. A lot of times when we feel stuck, we feel like we don't have a choice. We don't know what to do. There's nothing to do, but to grin and bear it. Mm-hmm. And so on the golf course, yeah. Yeah. You're out there and you're like, I got to make it through. I can't stop right now. And then it feels even more heightened that activation, that energy that's feeling anxious and scared or overwhelmed or wants to shut down Mm -hmm. is like, it intensifies when we feel stuck, like it's out of our control. We can't just walk away. 
Yeah. And, you know, we talk a lot of the same language. I coach on uh, exactly that, like first awareness and then dealing with emotions and not being afraid of emotions um, and how to, you know, allow them to be there. You use different modalities than I do. That's why I love to, I love having you on yeah. for different things to people. But one of the things that I do find a lot of people are afraid of is that once they experience, if they allow themselves to experience emotion, then it takes over and they're out of control. Yes. So they have to keep yes they have to keep it like with reins on or like yes. contained inside a little yes. like mason jar. So yes. what is it, what would you tell someone who feels like if I experience that emotion, it's just going to be too much for me and overwhelming and I can't do it. So yep. I'd rather stick it in the closet. Yeah. I love that. I love that. You just use the analogy of a mason jar. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like just, yeah, that's it. And it's like, if we open it up a little bit, oh, it's going to be too much. That's every human has that fear. And that's, so what I'm helping people do is do it in small steps. And one of the key things for the nervous system is that we, we know how to guide the nervous system back to a state of peace and ease. So at the very beginning of my coaching journey, I'm helping my clients to create a list of tools and resources, things that help them come back into a state of that parasympathetic state of existence, that green ventral vagal energy, which means anything that helps you to feel calm, connected, you know, resourced, grounded, um, able to think clearly, you feel just an ease and a flow. And so some of it are things people already are doing for some people. That's like an artistic expression. Some people it's walking in nature. Some people it's doing some sort of exercise class, you know, doing some of these or a hot bath, mm -hmm. you know, or some people it's a cup of tea or, or a cup of coffee or something warm mm -hmm. um, or scents like lavender and all these things. So we create a list of what's already in their life that makes them feel good mm -hmm. and feel really at peace inside. But then I expand upon that list with a lot of tools and resources that help the body to come down and extra levels. You said one of them, you know, one of them is like, a self-containment hug. And I do it a little bit differently. I actually put my right hand under my left armpit mm -hmm. and my other arm goes on the outside and it feels tighter and snugger and safer. Okay. That's one. Awesome. I know you were looking for resources, like for even just on the golf course. Yeah. You know, it's like someone doesn't have time to like, you know, after they hit a bad shot, say, so you can just, yeah. a moment, I'm going to take a bath, right. Or I'm going to have a yeah. cup of hot tea, which I love those yeah. off of the golf course. So we've got it. That's the thing that I think people feel like uh, a little freaked out about, I'm going to say is that we just, we need something at yeah. the moment, some tools to help us just calm ourselves, get back to calm. Yeah. So what I teach my clients is that we open the jar. I'm going to use your jar. Yeah. We open the jar. And I, sometimes what the analogy I use is we open the door, we're cracking the door, we're opening it. We're seeing a little bit of it. And then we nourish our nervous system afterwards. We honor our body, our mind, our spirit, for taking the step to deal with the mess. My whole big thing is like dancing in the mess. We're going to dance in it one step at a time. We recognize the mess is there. We see the mess. We step into it a little bit and then we pull back and we nourish. We step back into it and then we nourish. And so my, my actual, my healing hub is called nourish. And because okay. it has a bunch of tools and strategies to help you come back to a grounded state of nourishing so that it doesn't feel as scary to go back into the messy parts again. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is it has to be titrated in small steps to help the body and the nervous system to feel safe enough to do it again, to feel comfortable, to, to start to really trust. It's not going to take me down. It's not yeah. going to overwhelm me. I can feel these messy feelings, but I also know how to come back to pleasure and peace and I can be okay. So I can hold space for both yes. pleasure and pain. Right. And I know how to guide myself to do both. That's what my goal is. My goal is always to help people feel equipped to do both. Yes. Yeah. I, I always say there's no, there's no bad emotion. Um, I know I said, call them negative and positive just for the sake of yeah. the way that I, I get it. Coaching. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. there's no bad emotion. And I think our fear yeah. a lot of times is in experiencing emotions. We're like, we're not really afraid of getting physically hurt, especially relative to golf, um, anymore, but we fear 
feeling shame or feeling disappointment or feeling rejection or embarrassment. Right. And so when yeah. we can make those emotions or experiences, because we feel like if we're going to experience them, that we're going to be out of control. It's something that it's going to be just so horrible and painful that we're not going to be able to come back from it. I think that's a beautiful example. You're like, you can go in and start realizing that there's not really anything to fear. And when we can take that fear away, our nervous system will also get a little bit settled when we're out on the golf course, because it's not afraid, right? If we're afraid, we're not safe. It can be afraid of even just having those emotions. But I think yeah. the thing, I love the, the way that you um, adjusted the hug part. I mean, I think that that's probably way more useful than my little armpit one. That's more like that. What is that actress that like goes and smells her fingertips? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it's yeah. from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've done yeah. I've done that. I've done that move a couple times at parties. So um, I know you really wanted your your people to have a few resources even yes. on the golf course. I know yes. that was important to you. So there's a couple things that I've been thinking of too. Um that I try to teach my clients um how to do things incognito yeah. in the moment when the anxiety is rising and they can't. Like I teach them skills obviously to do to help the nervous system calm outside of any distressing experience, but we have to have some tools too, for during, mm -hmm. um, some of them, like the hug, like anybody can stand just like this and nobody would think of anything of it. Cause it's so close to like, kind of just going like this crossing your arms. I'm just yeah. going to say, yeah, cause people can't so see yeah. close. It's yeah. so close to that. And you can even do that, but just hold a little tighter, you know, for a second. Um, so basically she's doing crossing her arms, like versus like crossing your arms, like you're kind of yeah. ticked off at somebody, but yeah. put one arm underneath your armpit one on the outside. And then just yeah. give yourself a squeeze and no yeah. one would know. Yeah. I love that. Right. The other one is, um, literally energetically energy can get stuck in our body. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when we're in fight, fly, or freeze. And we're stuck in those nervous system states. Um, you know, in, in the moment, if we can't truly address the emotional roots of it, we can do things like shaking it up. Yeah. Like, so when you're walking, you know, or going to the golf cart or walking to the next, you know, part of the course, just shaking your hands, like shaking, shaking it out. Um, I do a lot of somatic shaking, mm -hmm. even when I'm energetically just feeling meh, like when I feel blah, or I feel like sluggish, or I'm feeling like my energy starting to drain. I do some things to help activate the energy yeah. inside of my body and let let it flow a little bit. Um, yeah, I love that. That's a good one. That one, like, that one can be discreet. Like people, you know, they're yep. out there doing some crazy dance moves. It might be a little bit more, yeah. um, you know, yeah. The other thing <laughs> noticeable, is but tapping. you can shake, you can shake your arms out. Pardon me. Yeah. The other thing is tapping and people yes. don't even notice it, but, um, so I don't know if you've heard of bilateral stimulation, I but basically, um, when we are doing something that involves bilateral stimulation, we're activating both sides of the brain. Okay. So I tell people that when they're even sitting and you could do this in the golf cart, you could do this, you know, just standing. If you tap each side of your leg and just keep alternating, or you're tapping your feet and you're tapping one foot, then the other foot. Um, or if you even take your eyes, one of the reasons why walking is so feels so good to the nervous system is because we are naturally doing bilateral stimulation at the same time. We're looking to the left and the right constantly, and we don't even mean to, but that's what's happening. That's bilateral stimulation. Well, you can do that on the golf course too. You can just stand there and you can look to the right and then you can look to the left and you can hold it for like 10 to 30 seconds and go to the next side. And that's something that you can do anywhere you are and nobody knows what you're okay, doing. And what does that do? I've heard that the eyes before, but I like the tapping with the legs and the, and the, um, and the feet. What does that do? So it stimulates both sides of your body, stimulating both sides of your brain. Okay. And it's causing, it's just creating calm in, in your nervous system. I love that. Um, that's okay. one. Another that's one is awesome. breath work, really yeah. learning some simple tools of breath work can really help because that you can do on the golf course. The longer your exhale is, the more relaxing it is to your body. So I, one of the basic things I teach people first is to inhale through their nose and then hold it just a little, like a second or two, and then let it out. And then sometimes if you want to even extend it and make it even a little more relaxing, I tell them to pretend they're blowing on hot coffee or soup or something and just blow like you're blowing into a straw or whatever, as you're exhaling, just. Okay. So in through your nose, out through your mouth. 
yeah, in through your nose, out through your mouth, but the mouth needs the, ex the exhale part needs to be slower. Okay. And that helps the nervous system to start slowing down. It, our breath is actually our greatest resource. It is our number one resource. We have access to it everywhere, 24 hours a day. Yeah. Like, and so learning that box breath is another one where people breathe in through the nose for four seconds, hold it for four seconds, exhale for four seconds through the mouth hold it for four seconds. And sometimes just moving the brain to think about the patterning mm -hmm. of yes. the, of the square and of the box, um, can help distract that brain, that monkey mind that's going crazy and is anxious about something in particular. It can help the body physiologically feel calm, but it's helping the brain to redirect its attention. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I have a breath, I have a breath, um, a breathing tool that I use, but these are, I know there's so many different ways yeah, to use yeah. breathing and you got some, I, some, I like some, I'm like, okay, I feel like I get lightheaded, you know? Yes. So yeah, I think it's good for people to, to practice and let, and find ones that work for them, but using it on the golf course, super easy. No, one's going to really notice yeah. it or pay attention to it. And you can do it before a shot. It doesn't take a lot of time. You know, the other thing too, is so with, I'm an EFT tapping practitioner. Mm -hmm. And so with EFT tapping, you know, it's, a, it's not as discreet, right? You can't really fully do the tapping experience in public because people are like, what is she doing? It's weird. Cause you're right. like tapping on your face and tapping yeah. on your chest. And it feels weird for anybody. The first time they're learning how to do it. However, learning what the acupressure points are there. I mean, it's based on acupuncture and it's really like these meridian points that create an energetic flow. So I tell people you can easily go to the points and just rub them or just put pressure on them even and, yeah. and just discreetly without people knowing there are definitely different points of the body that if you were to hold them and, and put pressure or even tap on them, it will create just a calming effect in the body. And those are most of the, the tapping points. Yeah. The EFT tapping points. Yes. So if someone were to Google EFT tapping points, yes. that would be, those are the main key points that I would focus on. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. They can rub them too. You don't have to go yeah. through the whole thing. Yes. No. Nope. Okay. So that was, that's awesome. Those are great ideas for people to use on the golf course to help them with their, um, anxiety. Yeah. Go. A really good one. Yeah. Um, because this is so simple and people really just mindfulness is simple. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's about us learning the skills and practicing it and recognizing, oh my gosh, like when my brain is going out of control, I can do something. If you try to use all five of your senses, wherever you're at, if you're feeling anxious and you start using your senses, looking around for colors, looking around for textures, smelling, what do you smell? Just anything to distract the brain from the anxiety that Mm -hmm. is just overwhelming. It helps the brain to just come down a notch and the whole nervous system can just kind of be like, okay, we're moving in a different direction. Yes. I use those. I, I coach that on touch and rubbing your fingers together and feeling mm -hmm. that feeling your fingerprints, it brings you back up to your prefrontal cortex. So people can start thinking clearly, it gets you out of the yeah. back of your brain. Where's squeezing them too. Do you ever do that? No, squeezing your fingers. Okay. We can add that squeeze, to that one. Yep, yeah. You can squeeze your fingers incognito and nobody yeah. even know. And, um, even just standing there, honestly, with your feet grounded on the ground mm -hmm. and just noticing I am grounded, I am safe. I'm grounded. Yeah. I am on the ground. My feet are here. I'm planted. I'm okay. So some of it is I like, will do the mindfulness part of like noticing where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I'm grounded. I'm here and feeling the weight, sometimes just moving the feet, shifting the weight just to feel the difference of like, okay, I'm grounded and I'm here. Mm -hmm. And then it reminds me to trigger some of these cue control words. Like I am safe. I am grounded. I am calm. I got this like, and I can guide and talk and coach myself through. Yeah, that's good. The grounding part. I haven't done that before, but that also that again, that brings your attention out of a little bit of mental drama back to being where your yeah. feet are. And then you can start, then you can, then you get access to those phrases that can help yes. create some more calm. Yeah. Yeah. Because what happens is the prefrontal cortex does shut off when we're, mm -hmm. when it's having that emotional hormonal exchange of, you know, cortisol and all these things that are happening when we're like feeling stressed and anxious, yeah. it, 
you know, it affects the way the brain works. Yeah. That's so good. All right. This was, this has been so helpful. I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of value out of this. I can't thank you enough for coming on. I know I've been meaning to get you on here for a while. I know you have a sheet that is like 10 easy ways. What's the name of it? So 10 easy ways to relieve anxiety and overwhelm. I have, they're, they're guided experiences. They're videos and audios of guided meditation experiences, visualization experiences, breath work experiences to kind of help learn how to guide the body back to calm. Okay, perfect. And you can find the link at kathyhartwood.com calm. <laughs> my calm and my calm always sound oh, the yeah. same. So yeah, .com forward slash C-A-L-M. <laughs> so, and you'll find the link there, but tell everybody how they can get in touch with you, learn more about what you do. I love your Instagram. I think you're really raw on there and go through a lot of those exercises. You go out there and dance and show people different moves. I love it. Uh, So (laughs) tell people how they can connect with you. Thanks. Yeah. So on Instagram, I'm at dancing in the mess is my handle. Um, That's kind of my thing, learning how to dance in the mess. Mm -hmm. And then on the website, you can go to is jillmariehowell.com. So it's J I L L. Marie is M-A-R-I-E, Howell, H-O-W-E-L-L.com. Okay, great. Jill, thank you so much for your time. This has been great. I love that we're on the same, we talk the same language, but you take it to a, you know, a broader level. And I think this is really going to be helpful for people, especially when you're talking about the emotional healing part that just, I, you know, if it helps people have some extra tools and also help them realize that they're not broken, there's nothing wrong, but there is maybe something to pay attention to. And that when you can learn, have a little bit more knowledge and learn some extra tools that you can find a little bit more peace on and off the golf course. Yeah. Yeah. So good. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too. All right.